Okay, so we've got Visual Studio open here. Um, I'm going to probably go through a little bit quickly on this, um, just because I'm super used to it, but I'm not really going to get into how to make stuff in Visual Studio, just give it an overview. Um, obviously you can run the video slower and reread it. So, File Menu, New, Project. Um, we want an MFC application, MFC's Microsoft Foundation classes and those are wrappers around the uh, various Windows system calls and so on and so forth that allow it to make it a bit easier to use. I'm going to change the folder that I use, give it a name, I've got to GS3, it's a GS3 PFD. Uh, everything else is just default um, and we're making an application. This is where it's talking about the different types. Um, we're going to be making a very simple application and I'm going to make it as a dialogue based. Uh, this is actually a dialogue here, so it'll look like just like that. Um, a single uh, document is basically this with one window inside it, um, and it supports a document hierarchy which allows it to open and close files. We're not doing any of that. And multiple documents is you know something like Word or Visual Studio or uh, Internet Explorer or like that. Uh, we're going to keep these settings the same. I'm not using HTML, I'm not using the uh, enhanced. Um, we're keeping the security checks. United States or United Kingdom, that's fine, we'll leave it in United States. I'm going to use static library, which makes it a little bit easier um, to distribute. And then here you add in the different types. Uh, so these buttons here, um, so we'll add a, a, a minimize box. We'll leave the system menu, and then we'll give it a uh, fancy name, flash cut, uh, speed control. How about that? There we go. Hit next. Okay, these are the different features. Uh, we're not needing ActiveX. We do want the restart manager, and restart manager basically allows it to uh, reopen if it crashes, which of course it will never do, never crash. And these are the names of our uh, base classes. I'm going to rename these a little bit because they're a little bit crazy. So let's just do that. Let's give it flash FC GS3, something horrible. It is horrible, so let's just do that. FC app. And then this one, same thing. And this is for the dialogue itself. So this is the class that wraps around the dialogue. And these are where they're derived from um, the C thing. So uh, this is what's called the, as it says, base class. Uh, and we're going to inherit from that. Um, and these are the horrible file names it's going to use. And this is the the application itself. That's the class for the application where it starts and going to. Uh, this is the one that contains all the GUI elements. So we'll hit finish and it's going to make an app for us. And there's our base dialog and all the code on the side here. Um, so we can go in here and, and move things around. Uh, we're going to get rid of some of the the default buttons already. Um, you could move them around and then bring a toolbox over here. I'm going to pin it in the corner so we can use that. So let's draw up something quickly. So what we want to do is we want to have a our own edit box and this will reflect the RPM. Oh sorry. And, uh, we'll, let's do a spindle one. We go over here to the properties, give it a name, spindle, like that, and you'll see it change. And then we're going to give it a um, an ID that we can talk to later, but we're actually going to wrap it around a variable in a minute. So this just gives it a unique variable name, uh, sorry, unique ident um, identifier in Windows. And uh, what else do we want to do with it? We're not going to change anything else. Um, this is actually just going to be a reflection of whether the spindle is on or not. So that looks good. Let's leave it at that. Um, let's add an edit box, which is what I meant to add the first time. And we'll just drag that out for now. It doesn't really matter so much about the layout. We're going to fix that in a minute. Um, same thing. Go to properties and give it a name. And this one we'll call it the RPM value. And that one's going to be a number that we control, but we'll just leave that as it is. And now we're going to add um, static text. And static text is just simply text that doesn't change. And we're going to call that RPM. You could just type that in here. And let's kind of bring it up and a little closer to the box. OK, 
Okay, let's just make the whole. So you can group them and move them around too. Uh, we're not going to need this as wide a window. I want it to be as small as possible. <coughs> okay, so let's add some uh, other controls right now. Um, so let's add another edit control. And we'll pop that in here. And you can control C and control V it, and it will copy it for you. Let's go to the properties. And I want this one to be to tell me whether the drive is running, stopped, and so on. Um, and now let's add another one for a future, which we'll call drive direction. Okay, so that'll be whether it's forward or reverse. And to make it easier on people, let's copy that, pop it down here. Oops, control Z there to move that around. Uh, in fact, let's, let's not copy that. A little tricky sometimes to get to these. You can tab through them as well. But it doesn't seem to want to give me that one. I'm not sure why. I think it's actually disappeared. So you can press Control T and it'll pop up uh, the dialog box. I think that's just an over. I hadn't redrawn it properly. Might be the capture app that I'm using. So drive status, copy that out, and I'm not going to copy it and paste it this time just because the capture app I'm using is interfering with the GUI direction. All right, so there we go. We kind of got a rough, a rough layout. I'm just going to save it and open it back up again in the dialog menu just to get rid of it and tidy it up a little bit. <coughs> Okay, now I want a, uh, another button. And sorry, my, my, apparently my phone is going. Give it a name and we're going to call it connect. And reflect that. Connect. So now there's a button called connect. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the OK button because I don't really need that. And then I'm going to replace it with another one called config. So back to the properties again. You can reach those from over here as well. Uh, config. Simple apps. I'm not giving them super complicated names. Otherwise, we'll have some things going on later. Okay, so there we've got it. Um, and what we can do is you can pick these and go to the format menu, center and dialog, and you want to do it horizontally there. And this will just that helps to kind of line things up a little bit. It looks like I've got the alignment on that's pretty good. Hit control T and it'll pop up and show you a rough idea of what it's going to look like later. And uh, that one's a little big, so we can make it smaller. Make it neater. Doesn't really matter. Format, center, horizontal. Same kind of deal. Um, oh, you know what? Let's add. I double select these, I can also move them around. I'm using the arrow keys here. And let's have another edit control. And edit controls can also be used to just print text to like a status kind of thing. That's exactly what I'm going to do here. If I can uh, switch to that mode, go back to the properties, and we're going to call it status text, like that. Stick his message. Um, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. But we're going to make it read-only, and that will change the way it looks. And it lets the user know that it's just an output box, just as these ones are too. But So let's change this one too. We can go this way or this way. Does the user cannot type in here. We can do that. They can't type in here either, but I actually prefer the way it just looks there. OK, good. So what we want, next want to do now is add uh, a variable to uh, this box so that we can talk to it. Um, so let's do that. So right click on it, add variable. And now it wants to you know, pop up this little wizard there and we can add one. So we're going to call it M and we'll just call it RPM. Uh, it's just the edit control, that's good. Uh, we'll leave it as that. Control type, control ID. Those are all fine. Uh, uh, RPM value from flashcard. Okay. And 
<coughs> sorry, excuse that. Okay, same thing here. Uh, this is going to be a reflection of if the spindle is on or off. We're actually going to change that text later for, uh, programmatically. And it's a C button, so we're going to leave it at. And the C button is just simply a press. So spindle, oh, spindle status, like that. Uh, so this, oh, so we're kind of over commenting here. If it's on or off. Okay. And then we'll just repeat that for all these. These are just going to be text box. So add variable again. It's an edit control. We're not going to actually edit it. We're just using its text. It's just easier. So what was that? Should we drive status? Is drive stopped? Uh, standby mode. These are the different modes for this drive. Slowing down. I think those are the four. <coughs> and those will be added in the code later. Okay, one for the direction, so we'll call that M drive direction. Oops. All about the lowercase. So I usually will always do that. Uh, direction drive forward. And one thing I'll do is switch between motor and drive because the drive is the variable frequency drive could be or it could be the motor on the machine. So let's call it motor, even though it's called drive everywhere else because it's the drive that we're actually changing the parameters on just to make it super complicated. Okay, I think we didn't do this one yet. So let's add one here. And this is just going to be a status. So um, status. Status messages. Nice and easy. Okay, now these two are actually buttons. Um, so we want them to have event handlers. And the simplest way to add an event handler in Visual Studio is just double click it. And it will add code. Let's flick back, double click it. There it is. Now we've got code. So the when the user clicks those buttons, it's just going to go straight to that. Um, and that should be it for at the moment. This The title bar is, let's short it down. Just because it's a little long and you can't see it. Let's just call it speed control. And there we go. Uh, you can change the icons uh, and that later. Um, that's actually in a different area. And then there's an about box here, so you can put whatever you want in there. Um, same for the version. You want to update the version numbers as you go through it and add in your own stuff, your own company name. And you know this information here is one of the things that uh, a lot of programmers, you know, virus and Trojan writers leave in, and allows them to be tracked down to different locations and different computers because there's stuff included in this and other things that get changed uh, depending on your Windows system and uh, other things to kind of leave a fingerprint of you. Good to know. Okay, so let's uh, compile that. And I have a few plugins for Visual Studio, so it looks slightly different. And we're using the 32 bit one at the moment, so we'll leave it at that. And when we run it, <coughs> it's downloading the symbol server um, from Microsoft. So, what it basically does is load debug information for DLLs. Uh, this is like, that's NTDLs, the core uh, Windows and kernel and all that kind of stuff. And it's downloading the um, symbol files for it so that we can debug it, which we're not doing at the moment, but, and there's our app. It doesn't really do much at the moment. We can click that, we can click that, click that. We can type some stuff in. Okay, next step is to uh, actually make it do something. <coughs>